spend a lot of time in this video discussing exactly what I thought about the films. I will pepper in some of my opinions as we go, but my full review will come a little bit later. In order to understand the ending, you're probably going to need to understand some other elements of the story, so keep in mind that story spoilers will be involved from here on out. The story begins with us learning of the Blood Queen, a powerful witch who was on a quest of world domination in medieval times. That is, until King Arthur dismembers her bitch ass with Excalibur and locks her body parts away in magical chests so that she can never reform herself and regain her power. So, as you can expect, that's exactly what happens. Throughout the film, the Blood Queen pretty much sets herself on a quest to regain all of her lost power and start a plague that'll bring about the end of mankind. However, she does eventually succeed in regaining her power, but instead of unleashing a plague, she stops and she starts trying to form a union with Hellboy. Now let me pause this element and come back to it to give you another little element of the story. One really positive element about this film is that it does, at least briefly, touch on the incredible lineage of Hellboy from the comics. It's explained that Hellboy's mother is a human woman who marries a demon and has a child on the night of her marriage. We learn that Hellboy's mother, Sarah, is a human being who stems from a long lineage that can be traced back to King Arthur Pendragon. Yes, the King Arthur. Hellboy's father is a demon, Azael, a high-ranking Duke of Hell. However, on the night that Sarah gives birth to Hellboy, he's summoned from Hell in a ritual by a man named Rasputin, who essentially botches the ritual, or so we're led to believe. The goal of Rasputin's ceremony was to bring forth a weapon from Hell that was capable of destroying the world for the Nazis. However, their plans are interrupted by a man named Lobster Johnson, who essentially kills all the Nazis that are there, and then a small team of U.S. soldiers scoop up the tiny demon baby, and they believe that he is a weapon that they can mold for their own uses. Now, once Hellboy learns of his lineage, Merlin summons Excalibur for him to use on his quest to defeat the Blood Queen. However, when Hellboy grabs the sword, it shows him a vision of himself flying a giant winged demon and destroying the world. So he kind of backs off of the sword. He doesn't want to use it for that reason. We learn that Excalibur is kind of the catalyst for unlocking the demonic side of Hellboy. And when that is unlocked, the prophecy is that Hellboy will bring about the end of the world. Okay, so back to the Blood Queen thing. When Hellboy finally does confront the Blood Queen for the final time, he's pretty much left with two options. Die at her hands in battle, or draw the Sword of Excalibur and use it to defeat her, but also possibly bring about the end of the world in doing that. Now, here's the part of the story that really doesn't make sense. When Hellboy draws the Sword of Excalibur, it opens a pit to Hell, and all manners of really bad demons show up and start killing people. However, after a really quick last-second pep talk from his father, he breaks free of his own demonic side and uses Excalibur to kill the Blood Queen. He relinquishes the blade, which banishes all the demons back to hell, and he throws the Blood Queen's head into the hell, getting rid of her once and for all. Essentially, the entire thing was trying to show that Hellboy's heart and humanity were stronger than his own demonic nature and the Blood Queen's advances. It just wasn't really handled very well. Now, the film did feature kind of a cliffhanger ending as well as two post credit scenes, so let's get into those right now. The final scene of the film shows Hellboy as well as the rest of the members of his team breaking into a Siberian base and going against another secret society of goons, except this time, after they defeat the majority of the bad guys there, they find a tank. And who do you think is inside of that tank? the fan-favorite character, Abe Sapien. Now, for anybody out there who doesn't know who this character is, Abraham Sapien is a member of the BPRD, and he is a humanoid amphibious man and a fan-favorite character and sidekick to Hellboy from the comics. The first post credit scene takes place after the initial credits are over, and it shows an extremely drunk Hellboy next to the grave of his father when he's visited by the ghost of Lobster Johnson. In the comic books, Lobster Johnson is a vigilante who worked in secret in New York during the 30s. However, in this film, it does seem like Lobster Johnson is a character working for the U.S. government during a mission in which Rasputin is attempting to summon Hellboy, and he is directly responsible for taking out pretty much everybody that's in that Nazi party that night. 
Keep in mind, Lobster Johnson is another character from the comics who's had a ton of independent comic books, so he is another one of those characters as part of this universe that's very, very popular. The final post credit scene that takes place after the other credits are complete show the character of Baba Yaga speaking to somebody who we cannot see. Baba is extremely upset with Hellboy for reasons that you learn in the film, and she asks this character if he's sure that he can kill Hellboy. The unseen character replies back that he's sure that he can, but you don't see his face, so you're left kind of guessing as to who this person is. Fortunately, you have your boy Nick. The character that you do not see that is hinted at is a character called Koshche the Deathless. Koshche the Deathless is a figure within Slavic folklore, and within the universe of Hellboy, he is also a slave who is bound to Baba Yaga. The reason that Koshche is called the Deathless is because he cannot be killed because his soul is separate from his body. So the reason that this secret scene is so important is because Baba Yaga promises this person that if he manages to kill Hellboy, she will let him die. If you want to learn more about this, then hit me up in the comments and let me know, and perhaps I can make a quick video about the six-issue miniseries. That is it for me for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot about the film, especially if you had a lot of questions about the very loose and kind of poorly handled ending to the film. Ultimately, I don't think that this was the Hellboy film that people were waiting for, but hopefully this video did do a good job of explaining what happened as well as what the actual secret scenes meant. If you're new around here, please make sure to like and subscribe, and also, if you're a big comic book fan and comic book movie fan, please feel free to check out our Discord. It's linked down in the description for this.